Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show with your host Ram. And well, we had two matches today in the Super 8. One was the first match which I'm going to be talking in brief because we have to concentrate on the match between India and Pakistan. It's always a special affair as you know. But yes, Pakistan couldn't actually, uh, you know, rectify the record that they had. Uh, in uh, in all major tournaments against India, the record that they had, they had never beaten India in any m any match in a major tournament like the World Cup 2020 or the 50 or 20 international, which I said yesterday. But what they did is they lost in not in a I mean they lost in a very very uh, uh, I mean as, as something where probably one would have expected Pakistan to score well, and I thought that Pakistan team. Uh, uh, probably everything is tilted towards them. At least this time I thought Pakistan would be in a position to beat India, but unfortunately it was not. There was some good balling from the Indian bowlers. Uh, uh, they, they rolled the Pakistan out for 128 and then uh, actually had a, a very, very clinical victory, I would say, over Pakistan by beating them by eight wickets. And this was a must-win match for India, which India won uh, in great style, I would say, especially thanks to that man who has been the talk of India as far as Virat Kohli is concerned. Today, what a knock it was. 78 not out of just 61 deliveries, 8 fours and 2 sixes. I'll be talking about that. And then the other thing that I would like to uh, say here is that for Pakistan now, the match against Australia is a crunch game. Pakistan have to win against Australia if they have to uh, actually uh, you know, come into the net run rate uh, uh, situation where India will be playing South Africa, as you know. So we are going to have a net run rate, and if Australia win, uh, then uh, uh, I mean uh, Pakistan, uh, uh, Pakistan would be. It all depends on the game between India and South Africa. But what it has done is Super H is really, really hotting up right now. Now let's look at it. Uh, as far as India-Pakistan match was concerned, uh, the other day we didn't have Virendra Sehwag. There's Virendra Sehwag into the team today. Uh, Piyush Chawla was left out. Harbhajan Singh was left out, and Virendra Sehwag and Balaji came into the team. Uh, in fact, uh, Pakistan today won the toss and they chose to bat. They decided to go with the same combination uh, that uh, played the last time. Uh, and uh, Pakistan, as I said, they, they, they start, I mean, in the, in the Indian bowlers didn't start off well. With Zahir Khan actually um, is line and length going awry, actually spraying a lot of wides. But, uh, and Mohamed Afiz and Imran Nazir also, I mean, more than Mohamed Afiz, Imran Nazir played uh, two good boundaries, one good boundary, but there were a lot of edges, a lot of things were happening at that stage. And uh, with Vindra Sehwag actually, actually grassing a catch, uh, which he tried his best uh, by diving forward. Uh, this was of the, uh, when Imran Nazir was batting. But then the Indian bowlers, uh, it was all started with Irfan Patan, who gave them the breakthrough. But Imran Nazir actually moved uh, far, I mean, he, he moved fully across his stumps and the ball hit his pad, it was plumb in front. Now that was the first wicket to go, Imran Nazir, LBW ball Patan for 8 or 5 balls with 2 fours. Shai Afridi was promoted in the batting order, I thought it was a good move uh, and I was, I was probably thinking that uh, Dave Watmore, the coach, might have influenced Mohamed Afiz uh, to do such a move where he promoted Shai Afridi and uh, Shai Afridi immediately meant business by crashing some boundaries, showing some power there, raw power. But uh, well, uh, it was absolutely short-lived as Balaji came into the attack and Balaji in his very first over struck by actually bouncing him and Shahid Afridi going for the, fell for the bait, uh, actually hit it to Raina. Raina took the catch and he was gone for 14 of 12 balls with two fours. Nasir Jamshed was caught behind the balling of Yuvraj Singh. Uh, there was a bit of a sort of a, uh, a doubt about the dismissal. Nasir Jamshed was not happy but up went the umpire's finger, but Yuvraj Singh was the man who struck for India. And uh, as I said, India didn't go with Harbhajan Singh today. They didn't have Harbhajan Singh. They went with um, a, a, a batsman. Actually, they had Balaji there, so there was no Harbhajan Singh. Nasi Jamshed was gone. After that, Mohamed Afiz was uh, struggling. India were slowly uh, tightening the noose for Pakistan because 43 for 3, and uh, the run rate was uh, plummeting, and uh, so suddenly it was looking like uh, Pakistan again uh, getting into a struggle and yes it was a struggle as Kamran Akmal uh, tried to hit Yuvraj Singh because Yuvraj Singh was balling tightly and uh, Kamran Akmal fell caught behind of the balling of Yuvraj Singh for 5 and that made the score 49 for 4 and then when the captain Mohamed Afiz due to the pressure which was built up by the Indian bowlers fell he was out to the part-time balling of Virat Kohli who also bowled well 
and uh, he actually picked up the wicket of Mohamed Afiz when Mohamed Afiz played on to a ball from Virat Kohli for 15 of 28 balls with 1-4. So that made the score 59 for 5 and then it took a partnership between Shoaib Malik uh, who has been looking good, he was looking good today too with a lot of his player strokes on the onside, he was looking fluent and Umar Akmal came in and both of them really had to really really rebuild the situation for Pakistan because they were 59 for 5 at that stage in the 10th over, they took it um, past the 100 mark and they took the score on to 106 with uh, Shoaib Malik uh, also as I said he was, uh, both of them were rotating the strike very well like trying to get single, Umar Akmal was uh, playing very very sensibly but uh, Ashwin uh, is another boy, as I said all the Indian ballers bowled well, Ashwin came in and picked up the wicket of uh, Shoaib Malik when everything was looking good actually the pressure was being built by the Indian, Indian bowlers and Shoaib Malik fell for the pressure as uh, Shoaib Malik uh, caught, uh, got caught at um, I thought it was mid wicket he was caught by Sharma the bowling of Ashwin for 28 of 22 balls 3 fours uh, that was the only good thing that happened for Pakistan I, uh, I thought that partnership between Shoaib Malik and Umar Akmal Umar Akmal uh, well uh, he uh, the previous over he had hit a 6 but uh, well Umar Akmal uh, fell a victim to Ashwin as he was caught by Ryan on the deep for 21 of 18 balls with 1-6 and uh, this time Umar Gul couldn't perform what he performed uh, earlier uh, this was thanks to Balaji who was bowling splendidly he was really mixing it up he was bowling the slow bouncer very well he was bowling the short stuff the slower delivery he had lots of variety and he picked up two wickets Umar Gul was caught behind with Balaji for 12 of uh, 10 balls he, he really in, in fact Umar Gul definitely hit 1-4 and 1-6 Saeed Ajmal, uh, he fell for one and in the end Pakistan never looked like getting into a big score because wickets started falling at regular intervals and Pakistan's uh, innings was wound up at 128. Splendid bowling by the Indian bowlers. Zahid Khan, three overs, no matter none for 22. Bowled well in the initial spell. Irfan Patan, three overs, one for 30. Was the costliest of all. Balaji, as I said, he was splendid. 3.4 overs, no made in 22 runs and three wickets. He had lots of variations in his attack. Ravi Chandran Ashwin bowled four overs. He was very, very difficult to get off the square for the Pakistan batsman. Pakistan batsman has to read him very well because he was bowling the cannon ball. He was mixing it up. There were quicker ones. So Ashwin was also very good. Yuvraj Singh played a great role, I thought. Two for 16 uh, in his wicket taking. Also, his fielding was very good today. Yuvraj Singh always is a good fielder, but today uh, his fielding uh, really, really was uh, superb. Virat Kohli, well, he, he did his job well unless he got some tap in that uh, final over where uh, Umar Akmal and Shoaib Malik went after him where they took 15 runs other than that Virat Kohli 3 overs no made in 1 for 21 and then he also came and sh shown with a bat today for India uh, chasing 128 when it thought it was a very very uh, small score and today uh, the old um, pair of uh, Gambir and Sehwag were in to open the innings but uh, one were and, and the ball was given to Raza Hassan so that was a bold move on the part of Mohamed Afiz giving the ball to Raza Hassan to start the attack but uh, Raza Hassan immediately gave Pakistan a reward as Gautam Gambhir was gone giving catching practice. He was caught in bowl with Raza Hassan for duck and let me tell you I saw a good look at Raza Hassan today the left arm spinner and he looks to be a fine prospect. He was getting turned, he was beating the bat and he was not easy to read. So I think he, uh, uh, Raza Hassan has really really impressed uh, everybody. He had four rows no made in one for 22. So that was the only wicket that uh, Raza Hassan got. After that Virendra Sehwag uh, uh, definitely crashed two boundaries on the offside of the bowling of Umar Gul also hit a uh, few more boundaries, hit four boundaries in the score of 29 and then there was a good partnership which uh, uh, came, uh, came in thanks to Virat Kohli who was uh, more the aggressor than Virat Sehwag by playing more than Virat Sehwag by playing a lot of good strokes and Virat Kohli let me tell you his batting is real magic uh, I mean so much time he has to play his strokes uh, the, 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 the drives that he used to play, the calves on the offside uh, how he used to, um, you know, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, flick it through mid-wicket, his wristy work. What to say about Virat Kohli? He is such a pretty picture for India now. And he and Sehwag actually stitched together, good, had a good partnership, taking on the t score to 75 in the 11th over. But Virendra Sehwag uh, then was out uh, trying to hit Shahid Afridi uh, uh, out of the over the fence. But Umar Gul uh, took the catch as inside the fence and he was gone for 29 of 24 balls, 4 fours. But after that, Yuvraj Singh came in and uh, in, in fact gave good support to Virat Kohli who continued in his merry way and as I said, no baller uh, was uh, good for, Yuvraj, for Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli was uh, supreme, was the supreme difference according to me. The way he played, uh, Pakistan couldn't really find a way uh, to how to get Virat Kohli out and he was simply, simply superb. 
he played each and e each and every bowler uh, he treated them uh, as what they had to be treated to be even the good balls were dismissed for boundaries and Virat Kohli had 78 to his name of 61 balls with 8 fours and 2 sixes taking the man of the match and Yuvraj Singh was not out on a good 19 of 16 balls with 2 fours India were home 129 for 2 as a must win match India took 2 points and now India and Australia are level with uh, I, I think uh, I'm not sure about that yeah because Australia have got 4 now because they won the match today in South Africa so India and uh, India are on 2 points and Pakistan are on 2 points as far as the bowling figures were concerned Raza Hassan, as I said, very impressive, 1 for 22. Umar Gul, 3 overs went for 30 runs. Shahid Ajmal uh, bowled well, but Virat Kohli played him very well. 4 overs, none for 25. Shahid Afridi uh, was not looking good today. 4 overs, no made him 1 for 34. Yasir Arafat bowled just over, with just an over for 11 runs. Mohamed Afiz bowled 1 over for 7 runs. Virat Kohli, man of the match. India getting 2 points in this uh, Super 8 fixture. Now, uh, let me briefly talk about the other match, which was South Africa and Australia. Australian bowlers uh, did a splendid job and they continue to do a splendid job but not only did they do a splendid job with the ball by restricting the South African innings to 146 for 5 in fact Xavier Doherty was the man who gave them the breakthrough in fact Xavier Doherty was given the ball he bowled the first over Richard Levy's defenses uh, were penetrated by Doherty he was gone clean bowled for a duck and Jack Scalis was caught behind the bowling uh, of Doherty caught Wade for 6 and after that Hashim Amla hit a 6 and Hashim Mamla made 17 of 15 balls with 1-4 and 1-6. After that, Dumini, uh, he made uh, 30 runs of 25 balls with 4 fours. But A.B.D. Villiers contributed 21 of 24 balls. But it was all left to the new cap, uh, F. Beharin, uh, who, who, who made, a not I wouldn't say um, a very quick knock, but well, he made a useful knock of 31 of 27 balls with 2 fours and 1-6. The partnership uh, of uh, the unbeaten six-wicket partnership was what? Uh, uh, got South Africa to a score of 146 for 5. Peterson was simply superb. He was reverse sweeping Brad Hawk for boundaries, reverse pulling. He was doing everything in the reverse gear. And Robin Peterson contributed an unbeaten 32 runs of 19 balls with 6 fours as South Africa finished with 146 for 5. Never a good score for Australia. And uh, and uh, that that proved to be true. As far as bowling was concerned, Doherty was very good. 4 overs, no made 3 for 20 for him. None for 30 for Mitchell Stark. None for 33 for Patrick Cummins. Uh, Watson 4 overs no more than 2 for 29 he has that magic wand with him he took the he took the uh, fourth consecutive man of the match award in this 2020 world cup and what a 2020 world cup he is having uh, Brad Hawk 3 overs no more none for 26 Maxwell 1 over no more none for 7 as far as Australia were concerned Australia as I said that they, they have been their batting uh, in, in fact their bowling has been good they did well against India, they did well against, uh, well against South Africa now not only that their batting has really come to the fore because if you see that the batting, the, the whole batting order has never been exposed. And today, uh, the other day it was a one, nine wicket victory against India. Today it was an eight wicket victory against India. This is showing that Australia is slowly, slowly uh, trying to gain ascendancy here. Now David Warner was an early victim. He was clean bowled by Markle for five of nine balls. And after that, it was a shame. It was a, uh, it was a Shane Watson show there with 70 runs of 47 balls, eight fours, and two club sixes. And uh, you know what to say about Shane Watson. He's another one like Virat Kohli in some supreme form. A form of his life I would say there. And Michael Hussey uh, was there along with him and they put on a century partnership. 101 run partnership. Michael Hussey initially took his time but he was giving good company. He was basically giving the strike to Shane Watson who was striking it big and striking it well. And Michael Hussey, he contributed an unbeaten 45 of 37 balls with two fours and two sixes. And Cameron White was the one who gave the finishing touches to the innings by clubbing 1-6 which was the winning hit and three boundaries in an unbeaten 21 of just 13 deliveries 147 for 2 for Australia it was a walk in the park I would say because Shane Watson was the man uh, who did it for them uh, he basically made it sure made sure that you know Australia wouldn't suffer any uh, mishap here 147 for 2 Shane Watson fourth consecutive man of the match in the 2020 World Cup 8 fours and 2 sixes 70 runs of 62 balls uh, uh, the bowling figures, well, I would say 1 for 23 for Moni Moikal, Steen, none for 15. I'm not going to go into that, unfortunately, due to my YouTube broadcast coming to an end. But dear fans, friends and subscribers, with wins for India, a must-win game. India winning the match against Pakistan and keeping the record intact of beating Pakistan in each and every match that they have played in any major tournaments like the World Cup with the 50 overs or the 2020 Cup and, and Australia uh, beating South Africa. Well, that's it from me, your host Ram, for the cricket show for today. See you all tomorrow. Thank you.